Hi, I'm Rob Mickelson. I'm the Director of Agronomic Services for Yara in North America. And I'd like to welcome you as we continue this series of discussions related to nitrogen use efficiency. Today I'd like to chat about some practical ways that we can improve nitrogen use efficiency. Of course, this is still a fairly general discussion today since the path towards more nitrogen recovery is specific for each crop in each field. In a previous video, we reviewed the many ways that nitrogen can be added or lost from agricultural systems. Here I listed only some of the inputs shown there on the left and some of the potential losses shown on the right. So getting the most recovery and the greatest value from added nitrogen fertilizer is what we call nitrogen use efficiency. And that's what we've been talking about in the past videos. So let's take a closer look at what we mean by nitrogen use efficiency. Just as a quick review, the most commonly used method to calculate nitrogen use efficiency is what we call a partial nutrient balance. It's measured by looking at the common inputs onto a field and then comparing that with the nitrogen removed in the harvested crop. The name partial comes from the fact that we're not measuring all the ways that nitrogen gets added to a field or all the ways that nitrogen can be lost. Instead, we're just focusing on the primary inputs and outputs. So for a quick review, let's go through this example of calculating nitrogen use efficiency on this cotton farm. On this farm, the harvested cotton removed 112 pounds of nitrogen and the farmer added 180 pounds of nitrogen per acre. When we go through this math, then we calculate a 62% nitrogen recovery, or some people report the reciprocal number of the ratio of nitrogen applied divided by the nitrogen removed from the field and the harvest. However, as we dig deeper into these calculations, we learn that nitrogen use efficiency really isn't a single number. We're all familiar with that concept of diminishing returns. In this imaginary scenario presented here, the first pound of applied nitrogen gets completely taken up and assimilated by that crop. For the 50th pound of added nitrogen, maybe only 75% of the nitrogen gets taken up. As we go to the 100th pound, perhaps only 50% is recovered. And as we go up to 200 pounds of nitrogen, only a quarter of that 200th pound gets recovered in the plant. So you see that reporting a single value for the overall nitrogen use efficiency can be a bit misleading. But fortunately, when we use the recommended application rates, nitrogen losses are generally minimized. So this fairly complicated graph from the work of Newell Kitchen and his group shows that the individual declines in nitrogen use efficiency on many corn fields in North America as the nitrogen fertilizer application rate increases. And then it shows the average in the black bar. So this graph highlights that nitrogen use efficiency decreases as the nitrogen application rates increase. So how much nitrogen should a farmer apply? Well, generally this question is answered by estimating what we call the economically optimum rate of nitrogen application. And that considers both the price of nitrogen fertilizer and the expected prices for the harvested crops. So this calculation seeks to ma maximize the profit for the farmer. This is primarily an economic question then and does not account for environmental leakage or nitrogen use efficiency. I often get asked by urban people, why do farmers use fertilizer anyway? Well, the answer is fairly simple, to get a return on their investments, investments of inputs, investment in soil health, investment in their labor, their machinery, their entire operation. So the question arises, does the best economic outcome for the farmer also result in the best outcome for the environment? in food production and nitrogen use efficiency? Well, luckily, the answer is usually yes when we practice good nutrient management. 
So we can talk about theory and goals for a long time, but what practical steps can be taken to improve nitrogen use efficiency? Well, the recommendations are very site-specific and very crop-specific, but we can identify some universal principles that can help improve nitrogen use efficiency. A nice review of the global scientific literature was recently done by a research group led by Dr. Yu, and they published a report in 2023 where they reviewed over 2,400 research sites to identify which practices actually make a difference in improving nitrogen use efficiency. They state that the current global average nitrogen use efficiency of 40 8% can be increased up to 80% by implementing a variety of changes. I've highlighted just a few of their results here to talk about. They say that enhanced efficiency fertilizers and combining the best of both mineral and organic fertilizers can increase nitrogen efficiency by an average of 5%. The authors reported that improving fertilizer placement, rate, and timing can increase nitrogen efficiency by an average of 6%. Surprisingly to me, the adoption of no-till practices had virtually no impact on nitrogen use efficiency, and a switch to the use of organic nitrogen sources had no impact or a slightly negative impact on nitrogen use efficiency. But by adopting a variety of practices, the authors estimate that nitrogen efficiency can improve by about 30%. So you can see that the potential improvement in nitrogen use efficiency across the world is not the same everywhere. This map highlights areas in purple and blue, and then followed by green, areas that have the highest potential for improving nitrogen use efficiency. Another example of how improved nutrient management can help nitrogen use efficiency was provided in this recent paper. The authors reported from a global survey, again, that better placement of fertilizer will improve crop yield, improve nitrogen use efficiency, and decrease emissions of both nitrous oxide and ammonia. So we're back again, talking about implementing the 4R principles of nutrient stewardship with using the right source at the right rate putting it in the right place and at the right time. So these are some initial thoughts that I put down to guide me on practices that might have the most potential for improving nitrogen use efficiency on the farm. I won't have time to discuss these now, but I would appreciate hearing your perspective and experiences. Um, crop nitrogen sensors might be useful in improving NUE. Remote sensing and drowns, drones, maybe. Um, cover crops, um, again, maybe. Crop rotations, probably yes. Buffer strips, no, but they certainly have other benefits. Conservation tillage, we talked about, has very little benefit for NUE improvement. Yield mapping, definitely yes, as we adjust our nitrogen practices. Research and education, we certainly need new technologies and new practices. And farmer education certainly will be very important. And some of the soil practices that might influence nitrogen use efficiency. Organic matter. Well, organic matter can improve soil properties, but it makes nitrogen management more difficult. Soil testing, certainly yes. Enhanced efficiency fertilizers, yes. Better timing, certainly yes. And split applications of nitrogen, yes. But implementing those four R's of nutrient stewardship of right source, rate, time, and place, yes. And that paper by Dr. Yu indicates that this is the most impactful practice that can influence and improve nitrogen use efficiency. Soil moisture, definitely yes. So I get asked sometimes, is there a role for biostimulants to improve nitrogen use efficiency? Again, I'd answer yes, because really any practice that helps plants overcome stress and allows that plant to more fully recover nutrients from the soil, letting that crop reach its full genetic potential, that also has the potential to boost nitrogen use efficiency. But I'd be remiss in a discussion of nitrogen use efficiency that did not include proper water management, especially in the irrigated parts of the world. All of the careful nitrogen management that we do can be ruined with poor water management practices. 
That could be from water coming from irrigation or from abnormal rainfall that we can't control. Also, the importance of crop and soil monitoring will help us be more efficient with crop nutrition. Just a summary that nitrogen use efficiency is very useful as a measure of progress in nutrient stewardship, but it is not the end goal by itself. As we discussed in previous videos, achieving a nitrogen use efficiency of greater than 90% or so indicates that we're having destructive mining of soil organic matter. And looking at nitrogen use efficiency alone does not account for farm productivity, food production, crop yields, and other soil health measurements. So if we've discussed various aspects of nitrogen use efficiency today, I hope you've gained a greater appreciation for the many complexities of measuring it and then how to make progress to improve it. Most of the scientific studies point us to the direction of the four R's of nutrient stewardship. I'm impressed that so many scientific studies keep coming back to that same conclusion. The use of the right source of nutrients at the right application rate at the right time and in the right place. So I hope to see you on the next video.